Have you ever met somebody who just makes you feel alive and, and somebody who's so fun and energetic and great to talk to that you just want to hang out with again and get a beer um, and spend more time with? Somebody who just has that positivity and <clears throat> makes you feel good and makes you want to be their friend? Well, I'm going to tell you how to be that person. So while we're on this self-help little journey here, I know we're taking a detour away from business. I know that this is the Sweaty Startup Podcast about service-based entrepreneurship, but I'm really into self-help. I read a lot of books about becoming a better person. Um, what I'm going to tell you right now is a method for you to be more likable and to make more friends and build a better life. Because after all, um, where you live and what you find rewarding for a lot of us is about community. For me, it's about community. Um, a, a town is about community. A, uh, a group of friends is the core of my life doesn't matter where I am, what kind of fun I'm having. If I'm not sharing it with other people and I'm not building memories with people that I care about, then I'm not having as much fun. So uh, when I moved to Athens, Georgia, because I liked what this town had to offer, I didn't know anybody here. I knew nobody in the town. I actually knew nobody in the whole state of Georgia. Um, so I took that jump. I took that risk and then I was tasked with making more friends and building a new network. And if you are in a situation right now in your life where you don't feel like you have a strong group of friends and you don't feel like you have people that you have fun with or people who share interests with you or people who you can have good conversations with or people who you can really get to know, then I'm going to tell you that it's on you. Great friends don't just walk into your life. Great friends don't just appear. Great friends aren't born related to you. You have to do the work to make friends, period. Um, that may be different than the, the mindset that you've had, right? Oh, I'll just hopefully meet somebody. Well, um, making friends is just like dating. It's just like trying to um, get married. Um, making friends is work. So step one that you don't understand about making friends is that you have to be willing to do the work. And to build a network requires work. It's not always fun for me at 6.30 when I'm tired after a long work day to put my shoes on, leave my house, and go turn it on to be, to be emotionally engaged with somebody in a conversation that I don't know. That is very rarely fun, actually. That feeling at six o'clock when I gotta put my shoes on and I gotta get in my car and drive downtown just last week to meet somebody new and have a beer with them it's not always fun. It's not always fun right before you walk in. It's uncomfortable, okay? You know you have to have high energy. Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you're not cut out for it. So the first step of being around who you want to be around is putting in the work. Now, I experienced this firsthand when it came to the people that I went to high school with. The people that I went to high school with, I spent a ton of time. I had a ton of great friends. I got a ton of great memories. But as I grew older, not much. I didn't have much in common with those people. Not many of them were into entrepreneurship. Not many of them were into making themselves better. Not many of them were into adventuring to new areas, to doing new things. Many of them stayed in the same small town with the same small town mindset, um, drinking 20 beers every weekend and going back to work at their nine to five jobs on Monday. And I wanted to get to know people a little bit deeper than that. I wanted to get to know people who had similar interests to me. I wanted to get to know, know people who I could have great um, intellectual conversations with. And so I decided that I had to do that work. So I moved to Athens and I networked hard. I sent cold emails to people. I joined the local business clubs. I went to talk to the local entrepreneurship clubs at, at a UGA. I basically worked hard at it. I said, oh, you know that person? Will you introduce me? I want to meet him. I want to meet him for lunch. And I said, oh, and then I would send a cold email and say, hey, do you want to get coffee or get a beer? I'd love to. And I did a little bit of research on them. And I said, you know, this is what I do. I really want to ask you some questions about this. And I think, you know, we get along. Can I, can we meet up? That, that takes work. That's uncomfortable. That's putting yourself out there. It's setting yourself up for rejection. 
and it's sales, right? It so, sounds so silly, but it's sales. Okay, now let's get to the meat of it. What can you do during a conversation to make people want to talk to you more and to have deeper, more rewarding conversations with people? So I have conversations with, I'd say 30 new people a month, whether it's my wife's friends, um, husband, or somebody I run into on the street or somebody that I'm doing business with. And I'd say nine out of 10 people have absolutely no interest in me. They don't ask a question about me. They don't ask what I do. They don't ask what my hobbies are. They don't ask what I'm into. They have zero interest in me. 90% of people, when they have a conversation, they have zero interest in me. All they want to talk about is them, what they're into, and what they have going on. But one out of 10 times, 10% 10 of the time, you meet somebody who actually does show an interest in you and what you're into, and that is what leads to rewarding conversations. So if you're on the other end of it, what you have to do is ask really good questions about them. Ask good questions about what they're into. Ask good questions about what they like, okay? Think about them, think about what, just show genuine, genuine curiosity in those other people. And if you ask a couple questions about that other person, you're gonna be way ahead of everybody else and you're gonna be a lot more fun to talk to and the person is gonna enjoy a conversation with you. The second part is show genuine interest in them. Show genuine interest in that person. Okay, it's not just about asking questions, it's about showing a genuine level of excitement and interest about what they are into. So if they start saying, I met a friend the other day who was a, uh, a he worked for the Clark County government here in Georgia and he was on their forest and wildlife commission and his job was to protect uh, the forest from wildfires. So I looked at that conversation as an opportunity for me to learn something and, and also show genuine interest in what he does. So I was asking him all about what trees he looks for. I was asking him all about what kind of controlled burns they do and how it works and, and if he was out in California, how he would um, manage the wildfires and what does the media not understand about wildfires and what's something that you guys battle when it comes to the public relations of having these controlled burns and blah, 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 blah. Well, he got really engaged. We had a really, really good conversation and we hit it off, okay? He found me interesting to talk to, period. So now, another thing. To break that barrier, so that's step one, right? If you work to network, and if you ask questions about the other person, and if, and if you show a genuine interest in that other person, what they're into, you're gonna be ahead of 99% of people. You're gonna make friends, you're gonna be enjoyable to talk to, and you're always gonna be invited to whatever's going on, and you're always gonna be welcome anywhere that you go. And you're gonna have a big network really soon. But how you take it to that next level is to really dive in beyond the surface level conversation with somebody. So when you start cutting through the questions, asking about themselves, getting the borderline biography, you can start to ask them deeper questions about what their goals are and about what scares them and about what they're working on right now and where they see themselves five years from now and what they are proud of of the past year of their life, what they're most proud of of their 20s, those kind of questions open up conversations to a whole nother level where you can really get to know somebody and you can really form a deeper bond and a deeper connection with somebody. 99% of the conversations out there are talking about, um, you know, whatever, if they're into, I'm, I'm into uh, motorcycle riding recently. I've gotten into some dirt bikes, riding some motorcycles, and I meet a lot of guys and I'm talking about motorcycles and all they want to do is talk about motorcycles. All they want to do, you know, I got this tire, I'm looking at this motorcycle, or I rode at this place and it was really fun. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Don't care about any of that stuff long-term, but you can spend four or five hours talking about things that don't really matter. What I really care about is getting to know somebody. What makes them tick? What they're excited about? What they're scared of? What they're working towards? What their goals are? Okay, if that's how I find out if I really have compatibility with somebody and it's worth investing more in a relationship with them. Okay, so I write, as soon as reasonably possible, as soon as it makes sense, I'm asking some of those hard questions to people. I'm asking them what they're excited about. I'm asking them what they're scared of. I'm asking them about their biggest failure. I'm asking them about the best piece of advice they have for people who are starting out and what they do. Okay, those kind of questions really help you get to know somebody. Now, another big part of all this, and which is a, a good segue here, is I read this book called Story Worthy. It's called Story Worthy, I actually I, I didn't plan to talk about this in this video, so I'm, I don't have it, the author in front of me, but it's a great read. It's about um, telling stories and making your stories interesting when you're talking to other people. 
And there's ways that you can do this stuff that involve um, going a little bit deeper, explaining the emotion of things, and talking about how you feel and how you felt and what you're scared of and what, you, what your goals are and what you're interested in when you kind of frame the way you tell people things. So um, I highly recommend reading Storyworthy. It's a great book. It's about a guy who um, there's these moth short story slams where they have storytelling competitions. And this guy, they're, they're five to eight minute stories that you have to tell an audience and then you get graded and they have 30 people come up and tell a story. Well, this guy won like 30 moth grand slam competitions as the best storyteller in the history of, um, I guess you would call it a sport, um, as a hobby. And he wrote a book on how he frames stories, how he tells stories. And they're almost always, they're, they're never drinking stories or a crazy event happen. They're almost always stories that lead back to him as a person and what he was scared of and what he was interested in and what he was working towards, the emotion behind life. Okay, that's what I find rewarding in a friendship. When I'm talking to somebody, I wanna hear stories that exemplify them as a person, um, struggles that they've went through, showing signs of weaknesses, um, you know, showing, talking about things that they're proud of in a non-arrogant way. So in the last episode, I was talking about the three things that you should never do, complain, um, blame other people for your situation and criticize people, gossip about people. And if you can avoid doing those three things and you can make conversation asking really um, good questions about somebody else's life and somebody else's journey and show genuine interest in other people and also understand that networking is not about, um, it's not about people just walking into your life. You can't expect good friends to just walk into your life. You have to do the work and it is work and it's uncomfortable and it's not always fun. But no matter where you go in the world, if you have this mindset and these, and these little skills, you can form great relationships. You'll never eat alone and you'll always be making friends and learning about other people and having people that you can rely on if you need things. So um, take, take from this whatever you please. We'll get back to business soon. But I just thought I would let you know um, these are some of the things that I'm thinking about and working on in life. And this is my podcast so I can talk about whatever I want. So it's not always going to be business, but I um, hope you guys can appreciate this stuff. Work on it. It'll pay dividends for you, and um, we'll talk soon.